Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our online worship in April. We are celebrating this month. We are celebrating the call to overcome obstacles in our lives. So today's worship is going to be all about how to overcome obstacles by understanding your own self and the needs of others. So we're going to begin with our song that we normally do in a circle, and we invite each other in as we are. So this time, I will just invite you to invite each other in. Okay? Here we go. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whoever you love, we welcome you. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whoever you love, we welcome you. One more time. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whoever you love, we welcome you. Great. And our chalice lighting. Double thumbs up for life. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather together online to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Awesome. For our mindfulness practice today, I'm going to ask you to have a seat. Or you could stand up, but I'm choosing to kneel down. And we're going to do some just breathing in and breathing out with sounds. We've done this one before, and it's really just to get in touch with our own selves. Okay? So the first one is breathing in and being aware of your body all the way into your gut. Here we go. Breathing in and breathing out. Uh, uh. Again, breathing in and breathing out. Uh. One more time. Breathing in. And breathing out. <sighs> Very good. The next one is to be aware of our breath. And it's breathing in and then breathing out. Are you ready? Here we go. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. One more time. Breathing in. Good. The third one is the heart-mind sound of ah. Many cultures around the world have this sound uh, in the parent, between parent and child. Breathing in. Breathing out. Ah. Breathing in. And breathing out. Ah. Breathing in and breathing out. Ah. Very good. And the last one, we're just going to have you make your own sound. Breathing in. Yeah. And that's all for mindfulness practice. The next thing we're going to do is our moment of inquiry. Since this month we're talking about overcoming obstacles, I have a question for you. I'm wondering how it could be ever possible, how many ways could we think about how a mango might be an obstacle? Could we think of that? Maybe your parents or whoever you're with today could be thinking and putting it in the chat with you. How could a possibly a mango be an obstacle? Hmm. The mango is going to appear later in our story. For now, I'm going to see what Sherry and Tommy think. What do you guys? What do you two think? Well, I think a mango could be an obstacle if you've never had a mango before. It might be scary or just something that would be difficult to try for the first time. 
it looks a little funny, like yeah. a rock. Yeah, it does look kind of like a rock or a potato. Yeah, so if you've never had it before, a mango might be strange. It might be an obstacle for you to try something new just because of the way it looks to you. So true. What do you think, Tommy? Well, I think if you were making a recipe that called for a mango and you didn't have a mango or your local grocery store didn't have any mangoes that they could sell you, then that would be an obstacle. Absolutely. So if the mango wasn't exactly the right kind of thing that you needed, you'd be out of luck. Yeah. But I was thinking about a mango, so about something else, and that is because my daughter has a mango allergy. And so for her, we found out the hard way that when she ate a mango, actually some people have get what's called mango mouth, and you have like a reaction that's like poison ivy, the skin of the mango actually has the same stuff in it as a poison ivy plant. And that's really super uncomfortable. So it's important to know the differences people have and the different needs people have, um, especially around food. We know that. But in other ways, too. Here comes our story. This story is called Ganesh and the Mango. Now once there was a very mischievous, or mischievous as some people say, a sage who came to a god and a goddess, Lord Shiva and the goddess Parvati. Now this mischievous sage said to the couple, I will give you a mango that has so many extraordinary powers. And they were like, oh, that would be great. But how, who would we give it to? We wouldn't keep it for ourselves. We'd bequeath it to our children. And they were trying to think, well, let's split it up. And the sage said, oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You have to keep the mango whole in order for it to have its powers. And so it was that the goddess came up with an idea. And she said, I'm wondering. She got all her great wisdom with her. And she said, I'm wondering if I could make a challenge to our two sons. And so she did. She said to them, now, I would love to give you this mango, she said, but first one thing, I need to have some way to tell who I should give it to because the sage said, we cannot split it up. So your father and I have decided that we would like to have a contest for you. The first one of you who can go around the world and come back, we will give the mango to. Now, truth be told, their children were very different. How many of you are very different from your siblings? Two. So, one of the siblings, Ganesh, had the head of an elephant. That's true. There. And Ganesh had a mouse to ride on. And Ganesh was there, had very small legs. And so it was. Ganesh was like, hmm, I've got to get around the world? Wow. Now, Ganesh's brother was very, very fit and very, very strong. And Ganesh's brother had a large peacock to ride on. Wow. That seems pretty unfair, doesn't it? It does. And so, here's what happened next. The mother said, okay, are you ready, both of you? And they said, yes, they were. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. They were. And so, one, two, three, and they were off. Now, 
it was that the brother, Ganesh, came back first. Ah. And his brother said, how could that be? How could that be? I was the one that went around the world and I am so much faster. How could he possibly have gone around the world and come back to you? How could it be so? How could it be so? Well, I went around our parents. Well, I went around our parents. Because they're the world to me. Because they are the world to me. And it was true. Ganesh used his smart wisdom and went around his parents because they were his world. And so the parents, because they were true to their word, gave Ganesh the mango. Now, Ganesh, who took the mango in the real story, was so generous of heart, honored the fact that his brother was very different, and gave his brother the mango. You can have the mango. And that is the end of the story. So I'm wondering, what do you think? Maybe you and your parents or whoever you're with could put it in the chat. What do you think that story has to teach us or remind us about, either about overcoming obstacles or about one of our Unitarian Universalist principles, maybe? What do you think that story has to teach or remind us about? What do you think, Sherry? Oh, I think there were so many things, but one thing is that Ganesh was wise enough to know what he needed, and he didn't need the mango. He already had everything he needed. That's so true. So Ganesh, even though he was very different with his elephant head and his little mouse to ride on, he knew exactly what he needed and what was the most important thing in the context. What do you think, Tommy? Well, I think sometimes the strength we need isn't always physical, but it can be mental strength or emotional strength or spiritual strength. And I think that's what Ganesh showed. Yes. So one of the things Ganesh showed us is that strength comes in many different forms. So depending on the person and how they're put together, they may have very, very different strengths than someone else. And in this case, well, as Tommy said, Ganesh teaches us about honoring uh, the strengths that are within. And those strengths weren't the strengths of might or the strength of size or the strengths of so many things that might have been important to other people. But Ganesh knew in wisdom what was important for him. I was thinking about this story, and one of the most important things for me about this story is acceptance that each of us, if we accept who we are in our own wholeness, we are actually more capable of helping to help other people to be in their wholeness as well. So it's kind of tricky, but remember we've talked about this before is like when you can live into your truest self, sometimes you encourage other people. And in this case, Ganesh was fully in who he was. And he was able to share that mango and that power with his brother. And so that his brother could realize, yes, like this loving kindness is actually at the core of who we all are. And his brother learned that instead of being all competitive and all I'm going to be number one, Actually, the most important thing was where your heart lives. Anyway, I'm sure you have a lot of answers. And I'm just celebrating that this story teaches us so much about encouraging each other, whatever our differences are. Yeah, that's why I loved it. Especially loved having this help to tell it. Yeah.
Okay, so we're going to close today's worship with a song, um, starting with a heartbeat to remind ourselves to stay true to our own heart, but also to reach out beyond us to all the hearts around us in the world. Are you ready? We are one world, one voice, one heart beating. We are one world, one voice, one heart beating. We are one world, one voice, one heart beating. We are one world, one voice, one heart beating. And that ends today's worship. We'll see you next week. It's Easter Sunday next weekend, April 12th. So we'll be together again. And I'm hoping that you will spread lots of acceptance and encouragement to your whole family this week. It's so important and it makes a difference. Bye for now. Love to you all. <laughs>